right? But mm -hmm. this is also the time of year they get their storms. Yeah. So December is their stormy month. Stormy in paradise of yeah. all places. But you heard the theme there, winter is coming. Oh boy. Thrones, and boy, do we have to talk about that. Yes, we do. Welcome in everyone. Thank you so much for choosing America's Morning Headquarters. We've got your guide to the holidays. The Weather Channel tracking the bumps in the roads and in the air during this busy travel season. So I know a lot of folks are trying to get to their destination yep. for Christmas, but we could have a lot of issues out yeah. there. We're gonna keep you safe today in the show. We're gonna talk to some DOTs about how they're preparing for the onslaught of people plus weather. And that's really mm -hmm. the combination. The weather itself would be a problem, but when you combine the hundred and- volume. Yeah, 13 million people that are expected to uh, travel. Okay. Last I checked, there were more than 200 cancellations just today. So I think that number is gonna go up, oh, unfortunately, yeah. over yeah. the next few days. Yeah. So here's a snapshot of what we're watching for you, and then we'll get into, all that kind I'm of thinking stuff. of the drivers, delivery drivers, which oh, Friday true. is gonna be such a busy day, yeah, and good point. it's cold as they dash from their sure they got truck nice to the houses. Gloves on, for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, as we inch closer to the holiday weekend, more and more people are boarding flights. Of the timing on how this is going to affect you and just how bad your weather is going to be. We'll start with what's happening out there right now, and then we'll take it in through the rest of the nation. Because these are virtual view, taking me here to Bruce City, and yes, temperatures are gonna be plummeting. The weather will be changing dramatically across the cityscape. In fact, blowing snow is going to be an issue, reducing visibility. So it's not just about the snow that is falling down or even how much snow you get, uh, but it's about the wind picking up those snowflakes and blowing them across the road, the sidewalks. Really watch your step out here as you're going to be walking out and about or doing any driving as well. So it's going to be an issue for travel. As we take a look at our forecast, you can see the bar graph showing where we get into that moderate snowfall rain. And even that can reduce visibility to a couple of miles. But note the wind on the top of this bar graph. As we go from Thursday morning all the way into Friday afternoon, those winds, look at that, 25, 30, 35 miles per hour. And you can see that snow is going to stick around, mainly in the light to moderate category. But still, even just a light snow blowing around can cause a lot of issues out there on the roads. So we do have the alerts on the map. Winter storm watches in effect. Will they go up to a winter storm warning? Or perhaps some of you, could you get a blizzard warning? out of this. It is certainly possible we see blizzard conditions as our low really strengthens and that pressure drops very rapidly, especially here in the Great Lakes. And you can see the wind along with the snow as it breaks out across the northern plains, the upper Midwest as we go into Wednesday evening. And then you'll notice the rain changing over to snow as the cold air takes over. So that will be the case in Chicago. Rough travel day for Thursday with snow going sideways out there. And therefore we've got you painted in red for Thursday for travel. O'Hare, Midwest, Way. Not only ground stops and ground delays, but I would not be surprised if we had cancellations as well. We're going to watch this system move across the eastern Great Lakes Thursday into Friday. Uh, Jen, you mentioned packages. You know, of course, Louisville, the uh, UPS hub. We could have some issues here, too, with the wind and that rain changing over to snow. It's just so far re 2018. And the highs, oh boy. All right, so let's get to that forecast. Uh, today, we've got some rain showers, coolest temperatures. Tomorrow, Warms up a little, 48 degrees. Yeah, that's warm, That's your warm-up. And then dropping temperatures. Thursday, 50, but rainy. And then look at the difference between Thursday and Thursday night. This is the problem. We go from 50 to 16 in pretty short order. So when that happens, there can be some issues out there with freezing. And so we're going to talk about that in just a second. I'm going to show you how it all plays out into the southeast with the precip and the temperatures. Nashville and Memphis on Thursday were in the mid-40s, starting as rain, Watch how the temperatures drop by 10 o'clock on Thursday night. Na Memphis, you're 13, but thankfully the precip has moved out. Nashville, now you're at freezing, and we'll have some chances of getting some snow in the area, and then we'll watch, we'll just see how quickly the precip moves out and how quickly the wind dries out everything. That is actually going to be a really important part of this whole forecast. So what could happen is a flash freeze. Whether it's just rain and everything wet or it's some snow, if you have the temperatures come in too quickly and cool, cool things down, you can actually get some freezing of conditions on the roadways, that black ice situation. So a flash freeze happens in a flash, and that's really the biggest danger of it. Temperatures drop sharply. That's exactly what we've been seeing. You know, you look at the forecast, there's not a ton of snow, but there is some snow chances into Tennessee and really not much in the south right now. But the problem is it will be wet, 
before the cold comes in. So we actually need the wind to kind of dry things out before the cold gets here, Kelly. It's all going to happen in short order. I know. It's going to happen this week and into Christmas weekend. So here's a look at our forecast for Pittsburgh. You've got the rain initially Thursday into Thursday night with those temperatures dropping, though, to 23 by Thursday night. And therefore, the snow comes in with a vengeance. That's wind is going to blow it sideways out there. And then Friday night, we drop it to four with still a few lingering light snow showers or flurries around. So here's the forecast starting off at 9 p.m. Wednesday. We're good to travel the Throgs Neck Bridge out towards Long Island, the New York State Thruway, Adirondack Northway. But that leading edge of precip is going to start to move in to places like Elmira and Horseheads and Binghamton there in Broome County, all dependent on temperature. That will determine what kind of precipitation you get. But even if you start off with the cold weather, it is going to warm up. We're going to have a southerly wind, and therefore most of the northeast will be in that Grinch green as we head through Friday. You see that wintry mix, though, for the colder valleys up across the Adirondacks and Vermont. And yes, there will be that switch over to snow for some across the interior sections, but not for all. By the time the cold air reaches the east coast, it looks like that moisture is out of here. So the, the year model has nothing for the big cities. All that precipitation for the interior northeast as much as 8 to 12 inches in the Adirondacks. And the American model says, you know what? I'm going to top that 12 gen and see maybe closer to, you know, two feet in some areas. Yeah, wow. All right, well, let's get to what's happening in the south, though, too, because it's raining out here today. You know, rain or shine, we will be here for you on the Weather Channel. And I want to talk about what's happening with the rain, because right now, good weather in South Florida, that's going to change. You see what's coming in. And this is all just an appetizer system, just a mid-level little level system that's coming through. This is not the big event, but rain nonetheless. And so I-20, uh, wet, I-65 wet. We've got some rain chances coming in along I-10 today, I-75 from Georgia all the way down through Florida. Look at this rain coming in, and this could be heavy at times. So I am worried about maybe some ponding of water on the roadways, even some flash flooding is a possibility. Just a lot of moisture coming in, and that's later tonight. Another batch up to the north, too, getting us just north of Tampa around that Big Bend area. But with this batch of rain coming in to central and south Florida, we could see one to two inches. That will be a travel concern today. Um, up to the north, it's lighter rain, but none rainy roads and wet roads and the glare and people distracted. It's going to be a tough day, I think, for travel just with that kind of hecticness going on. Then tomorrow's kind of your off day, a great day to get things done, whether it's traveling somewhere or whether it's running errands. Then you look at Thursday's forecast, it all starts coming in. And Little Rock, we do start as rain. We finish as a little bit of snow. We'll probably do the same thing, but just later in the day around Louisville, Atlanta, mainly rain. It's just those dropping temperatures coming in and maybe some storms off to the south. Now, the Weather Channel will keep you up to date on the threat for your plans. The Weather Channel's <laughs> blizzard in the making, extreme cold and an earthquake. Yeah, uh, the good yeah. news is no tsunami threat with that That's particular good. earthquake. Yes. Well, packing your patience is cliche, but it certainly is true this time of year. Rough air unpacked. In this one. I know. I have so many mixed feelings. You know, if you are flying, your flight could get canceled, and then you're just stuck. It's out of your control. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But if you're driving and you decide to go through the bad weather, it's dangerous. It is dangerous. But you yeah. can always pull off the side of the road, maybe get to a hotel, you know, before yeah. you venture further. There, there are, I think, more pros with driving. I don't know. That's what I think. I think, I do think flying is safer, but I think it's, well, it's more expensive for one, but it's riskier when it comes to cancellations. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You might have to the snowy weather. And even though you might be off, there will be some hardworking people making sure your travel through the inclement weather goes as smoothly as possible. Mark Nagy, with everything, the rain and then that changeover from rain to snow, a lot of concerns. What has changed since last winter to get you ready for this blast? Well, the main thing is that we... Precipitation, Mark, but let's talk about that bitter Arctic air that comes in as well. How concerned are you about a flash freeze, especially on the bridges and overpasses, and how do you even combat that? Uh, well, the Travelers, because a lot of people just have to get where they're going. They have to go out and run their errands this week, and we've got a lot of weather coming in, the rain and then the potential for some snow, but then also a lot of wind and cold following. We don't want people to get stuck on the side of the road. What is your message to everyone? Uh, Tennessee Department of Transportation, thank you so much. I hope you weathered the storm just fine there in the volunteer state, but it's not just Tennessee. That bitter cold is yeah. touching a lot of states this upcoming week. Most states. Yeah. Uh, I think the southwest may be the only spot that's right. not getting affected. Because even by Florida this. gets a piece of it. Yes, yes, indeed. So <laughs> we're going to take you into just how cold it's going to get, because that is a big part of the story. You mentioned the cold is going to impact nearly everyone. I think yeah. only the southwest really gets to escape mm -hmm. the cold. So. Yeah. 
Pasadena, LA, you're doing good. Is it Everyone too late else? to book a trip there? I know, right? <laughs> um, what's happening with this low pressure is it moves over into the Great Lakes. We've got such a strong jet stream digging in. It just energizes the whole system. So you've got the wind making matters worse, of course. You've got that cold front. That's your freezing line showing the purple, uh, noting the difference between the rain and the snow on the backside. But look at the Arctic air coming all the way for Florida mm -hmm. as we head toward the end of the week. The cold in Texas is going to rival some of the numbers we saw back in February of 2021. So oh, yeah. we'll get to that. Let's show you where it all begins up here, where we'll see the forecast wind chills going easily 20 below zero, 30 below, maybe even more than that below zero. And we're going to basically share that cold all the way down into Des Moines, Kansas City eventually by Wednesday evening. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, Here minus 44. City. Minus 44 is what it will feel like. Wow. You'll be looking at five minutes to frostbite out here because of how cold. And when you combine both the temperature and the wind chill. And eventually that cold coming for the Great Lakes as our system really strengthens as we get it over in that part of the country. But it doesn't take long for frostbite to set in, maybe a matter of minutes, five minutes in that darker shade of blue. And so this expands farther east. The system sweeps east. North Platte, Nebraska is a good example of how cold it gets with 13 below temperatures, but 39 below zero wind chills. That's mm. 10 minutes to frostbite. That's Thursday morning. Sleep in that morning. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got those wind chills forecast to go even lower. You've got Madison, Minneapolis going well below zero. They've got those heated skyways though, right? Yeah. Uh, some of these cities and towns are made for the cold. Yes. Yeah. Uh, down south, not so much. Right. Well, we take a look at Friday's forecast here. Look at what it feels like out there. 19 below Chicago, 22 below into Indianapolis, and there'll be areas even in Indiana that have five minutes to frostbite with how cold it's getting. And well, with the temps falling and the holiday travel season arriving, the chilly air could put the brakes on your plans. And that's only if your GPS is set to some cold weather like this. Meteorologist Alex Wallace debunks a few to get your ride back on the right path peek at the temperatures in your area as you plan your travel for the week ahead. We have a lot of cold air coming in and really this next storm system affects us coast to coast. So this virtual pit stop takes us to Commons Park in Minneapolis. It's a brisk day here in the Twin Cities and that's just the place setting for what is to come to the dinner table by midweek. We've got clouds that bring in the snow and then winter storm Elliott barrels through the Midwest. So snowflakes will be flying here in Minneapolis. That wind is going to pick up as well. Here's a look at that forecast where we do see the snow the snow continue to ramp up here across the northern plains tomorrow Minneapolis the snow picks up the cold comes in and that wind blows yes. have to close that down before yeah, they can let people go over it. Yeah. yeah no I mean so that was early this morning what a way to wake up especially yeah. in a busy week like this and the shaking was felt pretty far from that uh, epicenter too but no tsunami threat thank goodness yeah, thank goodness uh, so that's just one of many problems that we are tracking for you we've got Two little systems that have come through, one to the north, little light mm -hmm. snow mm -hmm. into Wisconsin. Not a big deal for them, um, but snow nonetheless. And then to the south, we have some rain out there before mm -hmm. the main event gets going. Yeah, the bigger storm having that ticket punched in Seattle and then yes. making that cross-country trip yes. as we go towards Christmas weekend. Yes, yes. All right, so we'll get it all covered for you, starting with what's happening today with the little lowlands. Reports of homes damaged as well. There's a bridge that needs to be inspected. Yeah. Um, so a lot of issues come, coming along with that quake. Yeah, I mean, 6.4 isn't the strongest, but it's not the weakest either and right. so we'll definitely get see some damage and certainly in the, you know as morning uh takes over we'll get more stories from people yeah. cool. the good news is no tsunami threat with that mm -hmm. so uh, we'll follow that story as we get more information but in the other news we have a big wave of cold air yes. that's taking over the middle of the country the cold the snow we have yeah. a coast to coast storm winter storm elliot and it's already incoming right now with snow in seattle last night yeah about well, just less than a quarter of an inch yes. i think yeah but still this this is the beginning <laughs> so i want to take you into all of it we'll actually start with what's happening in the Northwest, just to give you uh, the timing out of everything here in terms of how things play out. Now, you know, we've got snow, mainly mountain snow here in the West. Seattle, we've changed over to rain. Uh, we're going to be watching everything spread in across the Northern Rockies and Montana. We've got the Sawtooth Mountains in Idaho. We'll have snow here, maybe five to eight inches in some of the higher spots. And here into um, Jackson Hole, I mean, you go up in the mountains there, we've got more than a foot, maybe foot and a half of snowfall coming your way. Here's here it is right now. You can see everything coming in. There's our low pressure. But what's going to happen as we watch everything dive in here into the um, northern plains? This low pressure drops south. Really, I think we might even get a new low develop. Either way, it's going to be a strong low that we see right here across parts of the northern plains. And then it moves into the Great Lakes. This is a very powerful jet stream. And that helps strengthen the low, along with the fact that we've got a strong low and then a strong high pressure building in behind it 
both of those might be record breaking, low pressure and high pressure, that's going to mean a lot of wind and just a lot of wind energy with this whole system. The position of the low pressure itself and the track it takes will help determine who gets the heaviest of snowfall, which will be over a foot. But it's widespread impacts. I mean, you look at all of this in terms of the colors on the map, the green indicating rain, the pink indicating a changeover, the blue indicating snowfall, and the pink indicating some ice, which we may see at the start of the system in some of the valleys of Pennsylvania, Northern Virginia, Western Maryland, and even West Virginia. Now, you see that actually take shape for you on Thursday with some rain moving up through the Carolinas. But this is the main event with all of this wind and know that we'll see out here in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, sweeping through Indiana and then into Ohio, the low pressure tracking up through Michigan. And again, remember where that sweet spot is somewhere here. The low would be about here. We're going to see a ton of wind and a snow happening for you with likely somebody getting blizzard conditions. It's, it's hard to actually verify blizzard. You have to have 35 mile per hour winds or stronger for three hours or more with visibility a quarter mile or less. And believe it or not, it's hard to verify. We didn't see that many spots with the last storm do that, but we have a chance again with this one. Snowfall totals, this is the Euro. We've got places with a foot plus in Indiana, in Michigan, maybe even in spots here in the Northeast, and then the GFS, a little bit less, but you know, still significant footprint of snow, which very impactful travel day, Kelly, we'll see it all. Yeah, this is gonna be an intense storm, and we this, Jen. Yeah, I think so. So, you know, Almost. when we talk, yeah, bombogenesis yeah. yeah. uh, with a low strengthening significantly in the Great Lakes, we see it, you know, in hurricanes, we call it rapid intensification, and this system is going to rapidly intensify, and the bottom drops out. We're talking about a low pressure, very strong low pressure, and that's gonna get the wind going, and along with that snow, it's gonna be going sideways. And then, of course, you've got that bitter cold that comes in as well. So. Check out the wind and the blue showing your snow anywhere from Rhinelander, Wisconsin, down to Kirkland, Missouri, Kansas City, 35 to 40 miles per hour. Chicago calm for Thursday morning, but then by Thursday afternoon, it's a whole nother story. That is when the snow breaks out. You've got the wind increasing at O'Hare and Midway. Still raining for places like Indianapolis and Lexington, Kentucky, up towards Cleveland. But even there, that rain snow line is headed in your direction. So the airports will definitely see some significant problems, whether it's delays or cancellations cancellations already till today we've got a couple hundred cancellations so I think that number is going to increase as we head towards Thursday you get a major hub like Chicago involved and that's why we've got you in the red major delays are expected with that snow coming down temperatures in the mid-20s as we go through the day and those temperatures will be dropping by the way some of you actually see your high temperature in like the wee hours of the morning and then they basically drop off during the afternoon there's the low centered right over Cadillac Michigan you've got those winds in Traverse City 15 to 20 uh, Chicago gusting as high as 50. Even after the snow is done, it will be blowing around because the winds will take a while to calm down. Detroit, Cleveland, de-icing delays, snow removal delays. Well, could we see airport closures? That's a possible too. It's all on the table here with those very cold temperatures coming in behind the system by Friday. I'm going to rival that, although thankfully it's not going to last. He went week, to Mount Rushmore and got a selfie while he was yeah, there. So it's a little else thirsty. Is there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, we're going to get the wind. We're going to get the snow, and yes. that's going to blow around the snow, reducing visibility. Yeah. I'm worried, you know, holiday decorations, where are they yeah. going to end up? You've got these winds, 40 to 50 mm -hmm. miles per hour. Power could go out. Yes. And that's what I'm worried about, because then when we have no power, no heat, with this dangerous cold. Right, exactly. Worried about that, especially all the way down into Texas. Mm -hmm. The cold that we're going to get is going to rival the cold that we saw in February of 2020. Right. So you know, we are concerned about the cold air coming in and it comes in with strong winds. 40 to 50 miles per hour, especially across the high plains. Yeah, so therefore, when you get wind gusting as high as 45 miles per hour, which we're forecasting, can be difficult to drive those high-profile vehicles, especially the empty tractor trailers. They go over like a sail. Yes. You know, yes. it picks up the wind, and those small, unsecured objects, they could be blown around as well. Yeah, that's why we're worried about some of those holiday decorations. Mm -hmm. So then on Friday, we're going to watch our low pressure move up here into the Great Lakes, a very strong low pressure. And you see all these lines. These are mm -hmm. isobars, lines of constant pressure. When you have a lot of change in pressure, and a lot of lines like this mm -hmm. it means a lot of wind. Yeah, and that wind uh, also causing some serious wave action on the Great Lakes. Yeah. Uh, gust to 60, make sure all those loose objects outside are secured. Garbage cans, we mentioned holiday decorations. Postpone any unnecessary driving, especially those high-profile vehicles. Yeah. yeah, power lines, trees. I mean, we could certainly see, and we're expecting to see, power outages because of all of this wind. And then when you combine it with the snow, it reduces visibility. Mm -hmm. So we can take you into first Wednesday night when things really start to get going. And then on Thursday, I mean, we see the winds in Kansas. Kansas City and Des Moines gusting 30, 35, Chicago gusting close to 40 or 50 with snow falling, mm -hmm. which means visibility is going to be very tough. A lot to keep track of, for sure. Yeah.
Well, Rainer. TV, yes, TV. Uh, right now, though, you know, let's talk about winter. It's in full swing. So many of us tend to bump up the heat inside to stay warm when it comes to sleep. But cranking the heat may not give you the best rest. Meteorologist Chris Bruin spoke with sleep expert Dr. Peter Polos about how to get the best night's sleep. All right, we're getting ice. It doesn't work as well when it gets that cold, and so it's something that we'll be watching as a concern. Let's start with this forecast and how it's going to impact your travel beginning today, where we've got that snow into the northwest. Seattle temperature 39, but going down. And then we actually have two little systems. One tiny one up here in Michigan, maybe bringing a little bit of light snow, and actually another little system bringing rain from Atlanta down to Tampa, and it could be heavy showers and maybe thunderstorms in central and south Florida. That will be a travel impact for today. I think otherwise, we're lucking out today so far, looking good in the Northeast. We'll keep an eye on Atlanta. Southern Plains look good. Seattle will watch your weather with that snow and rain mix coming your way. Now, tomorrow looks to be one of the better days. Thursday is the day that we have to watch out for. So if you can do any kind of traveling tomorrow, do it. On the roads by Thursday, we'll have the rain spreading in throughout the south. Thunderstorms possible by late in the day here into Florida. And then it's that changeover. We'll have rain to start in Little Rock, but you have the possibility of finishing as snow and your temperatures drop so fast. The flash freeze is what we're worried about. Going down to 10 in Louisville, Little Rock 22, Atlanta. Th these are the high temperatures on Friday, 21 degrees. It's going to be frigid out there and sub freezing most importantly. So anything wet will have frozen overnight if it doesn't dry up. There'll be a lot of wind. The wind may help evaporate um, and you know improve those road conditions, but certainly something to watch out for in Kentucky and Tennessee. Atlanta Saturday, another cold one, dry. But all the way into South Florida, we will be cold, only 59 degrees, flirting with some of our coldest temps in the last couple of years here for high temperatures. And, you know, Thursday, the biggest travel day, Kelly, we heard from the FAA that the most flights for the holiday season happen on Thursday. It's the worst weather day. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah, that's not good. <laughs> then and move up into the Great Lakes region. That puts the right side of that storm or the eastern side mostly in that warmer qu quadrant of the storm. So that's why we're dealing with a rain situation and not so much snow. So Wednesday night into Thursday, the Arctic air sinks all the way down through the central and southern plains and then doesn't stop there. It bleeds into the southeast as well. And that low pressure basically strengthening as we go. So we're going to have snow going sideways. We're going to have the bitter cold temperatures as well. These are your wind chill values as we take a look at this evening. Uh, 7 o'clock, minus 17 is what you need to dress for in Minneapolis. If you're heading out and about minus 12 in Sioux Falls, it's going to feel like zero in Des Moines. Of course, overnight, those temperatures get even worse. We lose the effect of the sunlight, but even during the day, the sun is not helping us much at all. Uh, we're talking about temperatures well below zero. This is what it's going to feel like in Rapid City for tomorrow evening, minus 44 degrees. That's why we have those wind chill advisories and warnings in effect, and many of them go all the way until Saturday. So it doesn't take long for frostbite to set in. The darker the blue, the less time it takes for frostbite. That tingling sensation, the fingers and toes, uh, if you start to feel that, you need to warm up immediately. So take a look at North Platte, Nebraska by Thursday morning. We're talking about minus 13, winds around 20 miles per hour, making it feel like minus 39, and therefore only about 10 minutes for frostbite to set in. And you can see that Arctic blast basically with us even as we head towards Thursday and the end of the week as well, Jen. Well, driving a because this forecast is one that will be changing. There are still some details that need to be ironed out and worked out. We've been looking at the model data, of course, and coming up with our own blended forecast, mm -hmm. but it's still apt to change. Of course, watching the track of the low and really for those who gets the biggest snowfall matters a lot where exactly that low tracks. There's always that sweet spot of some of the biggest totals. Fortunately, it might be the case for some of you where, you know, we have such travel issues expected on Thursday that you might just decide yeah, Christmas maybe, will be different. <laughs> maybe travel for New Year's instead. Sounds good to me, <laughs> especially looking at our forecast. I know. <laughs> well, welcome back in. Thanks for choosing America's Morning Headquarters as your guide to the holidays. The Weather Channel is basically tracking the bumps in the roads and in the air during this busy travel season. We've got the information for you scrolling on the bottom of your screen, and we're also talking to the Department of Transportation yeah. to see how they're going to be dealing with the roads going forward. We'll give you some perspective on the forecast here. Quick look at your snapshot, and then we'll dive into the details.